Momster. Momster. I don't need to explain anything here. <laughs> I am in Santa Fe. I'm having a wonderful time. Many of you know that I lived here for quite a while and it has been very affirming coming back here, having so many loved ones, saying that it looks like I'm living my best life, being my best self in California, and overall just this feeling of like Santa Fe and San Francisco are very much both my homes. Whoop. Oh, good God, okay. And, <laughs> and that I have so many loved ones in both places. But let's get into our shared collective momster <laughs> reading for this now. Okay, so I rarely do this, I usually intuit, but I have never pulled this fucking card before. Re okay. We've had a couple margaritas, okay, it's fine. So, rewritten history. Where are the R's? Okay. Books possess a magic greater than the sum of their parts. From society's earliest documentation, efforts to immortalize and pass on lessons learned can be found stenciled on the walls of prehistoric caves. Hinted at in art, masonry, tools, clothing, architecture, and most importantly, books. Book books. Regardless of the language, they are a hollowed clue of the intricate web connecting us all throughout space and time. Mm. Reminds me of how when you are reading an author's thoughts, they may even be dead. Books are like... Writing is the only way that you can be inside of another person's psyche. And of course, when we read, we are filtering that written word. I feel like I need to take these off. Um, through our own psyche, right? So I can tell you exactly the fuck how I'm feeling through my own writing, but you are going to filter it through your own experiences, what you have felt, right? So you're not gonna feel exactly what I'm feeling in what I have written. You will feel, you know, it will be filtered through your own experiences, your own feelings, and then, you know, you will get the second layer of like what I'm actually talking about. Okay, what else here? Totality, to Baby, okay, totalitarian regimens often target culture, specifically literature, because we are a people who understand ourselves through story. All literature is dangerous to an authority that fears the free flow of ideas. A population cannot be controlled without also controlling the information it consumes. More than a fundamental repression of ideas, this erasure of a people's history, culture, and humanity is a step toward erasing the people themselves. Right. So the erasure of story equaling the erasure of us. Because what are we? We're stories. We're made up. We're just narratives. We're just characters, dare I say. What can be so dangerous in a book or about a truth that would call for its annihilation. Oh, this is making me think about queer people, trans people. Obviously, I am white-toned, but people of Asian descent, indigenous, black descent, that which is dangerous, dangerous about these different sorts of people that causes the, um, that one who wants to have the overarching narrative to want to annihilate such people. Under what circumstances would a highly intelligent nation burn its books? 
Under what conditions might a highly intelligent person rewrite their history? Even you, perhaps, in this instance. Oh, keep receipts for everyone's sake. So, Doc, I'm still here, okay? <laughs> Hang with me in this monster tipsy margarita reading. Um, so, rewritten history talking about what do you want to erase? What do you want to rewrite? This can be good, this can be bad. Like bad as in like the burning of books, I want to forget it, like the stories I have about myself, the things I've been through, like I want to erase it, I wanna not think about it. Like that's not possible. Every time a book is burned, it just makes that book more valuable. And when we do that to our own stories, when we say I want to fucking erase this narrative that I have that has been playing throughout my life, then it becomes even even juicier and it pulls us us pulls us in even more into playing out that narrative as opposed to actually processing into actually being like wow this is the story that keeps playing throughout my life let me write this down let me document it let me record it let me see what the fuck is going on here keeping track of the themes in my life maybe through journaling through photography Mm, photography, um, and then saying, okay, I can see how this narrative is playing out and I can see how it's a story, right? In a story that I am playing out as opposed to a narrative that is ruling who I am and how I am, okay? The more that we are aware of our stories, of our documentation, of our photography, of our narratives, the more we can say, this is a thing I play out instead of this is me. When we go, this is me, this pain, this trauma is me, the more it becomes actually dangerous and instead of us potentially burn it, it burns us up. Anytime we are wanting to burn books, burn a story, it's because it is burning us and consuming us and we are so afraid of it and we're not a not letting ourselves be able to actually integrate and process, okay? So, let's not burn our books. Maybe, although we can rewrite our histories insofar as looking at the narrative and saying, okay, a personal example, I've worked with some abandonment issues, so maybe having a one-night stand past me would have been like, this person's abandoning me. They're a terrible person for sleeping with me in the first place and now not having a relationship with me. Present me can rewrite that, say, okay, they're not a terrible person. This thing happened without me looking into the proper like negotiations, stating proper boundaries in order to get what I actually need to feel safe. So that being an example of rewriting, right? Like rewriting our narrative traumas instead of saying this bad thing always happens to me, saying, okay, what's actually going on here? Instead of me projecting my pain what is actually going on? Did this person willingly, purposefully try to hurt me? Or are they just being a person and their actions happen to trigger me and I'm seeing my triggers and seeing that this is something that comes up for me when I do this particular action and maybe I need to keep different actions in order to have a better outcome, okay? Rewriting history. This person is not a villain, this person is a person, they did something that triggered me, my traumas are my own, my triggers are my own, I'm gonna take care of this shit instead of keeping, continuing to blame other people for my pain, okay? I think that when we stop blaming other people for our pain, when we stop projecting, when we start taking responsibility for our own traumas and triggers, that's when we access sky daddy night sky daddy 
so that how the sun vitalizes and gives us nourishment. It's that question of how do I walk with my masculine? No matter what gender you are, no matter what body type, this is about like, how do I allow my masculine, my emperor, to fully walk and show up with me daily? And like, say the shit I need to say, set the boundaries I need to set, voice the expectations I need to voice instead of holding all of that back in favor of continuing a narrative that doesn't, that only hurts me, okay? And then acceptance being the answer. You know, if you're having a hard time with not burning your old narratives that are keeping you from being Sky Daddy, maybe it's time for you to just like sit in that chair with a glass of water with your body. Like literally sit with your body what am I feeling? You are never going to be able to escape your old narratives around pain, suffering, and trauma and diminishment, smallness, until you are able to actually sit with your feelings, that whole like feel your feelings, sit with your body. What is your body telling you? Maybe the person in front of you isn't a bad person. Maybe you have just been ignoring what the fuck you've been feeling for years. <laughs> and now you have encountered yet another reflection in another person. And they're not a villain, but someone who has popped up in the universal fucking operation game to show you what needs to be worked on, what needs to be felt and seen within your own body in order for you to be all that you can be so that you can no longer be projecting on others, so that you can no longer keep saying, telling other people that aren't even close to you, that they are responsible for your pain and everything you've gone through. I'm not responsible for your pain, honey. If I could fix it, I would, but it's not my bag. My trauma is not your trauma. My triggers are not your triggers. And I'm sorry if I hurt you that was never the intention. But if you don't want to listen to other people's intentions, if you just want to tell them what bad people they are, maybe it's time for you to step back from interactions with people altogether until you figure out your shit and can take responsibility for all the ways in which you've hurt yourself and give yourself that forgiveness that you are so seeking from other people. Momster. Okay, good night.